Designed towards the end of the First World War, the Vickers Vimy would come too late for service during the war, but became a staple of the RAF bomber group throughout the 1920s, and would make a name for itself flying numerous long-distance records. The story of the Vickers Vimy starts in 1917. The war had been ravaging for three years and had turned into a bloody stalemate. The British started looking and developing bombers that could bomb targets deep within German territories, and as a result, in August that year, orders were lodged with Hanley Page and Vickers Limited to design a prototype that could fulfil this requirement. Designed at an astonishingly fast pace by chief designer at Vickers, Reginald Kirkshaw Pearson, the first prototype took to the air for the first time only four months later on the 30th of November 1917 from Royal Flying Corps Station, Joyce Green. Four prototypes trailing various engines, Hispano Susia, Samson, Sunbream, Mari, Fiat and the Rolls-Royce Eagle emerged with the first FB27 being sent to Marlesham Heath for trials in January 1918. Here it made a positive impression on officials, in particular when it proved that it could lift a heavier payload than its competitor, the Hanley Page 0400, with only half the effective engine power. The Vimy was cleared to carry a bomb load of 2,500 pounds. However, engine problems beset the Vimy prototype, and by April it had been returned to Joyce Green. Unfortunately, in September, the third prototype was destroyed after it crashed, detonating his payload and killing the pilot. The Americans also showed interest in the Vimy, requesting the use of Liberty engines. A trial installation was set up, but was destroyed in a fire and the program would progress no further. The British government placed large orders of over a thousand Vimy's, with the first models to be powered by Fiat engines and based upon the third prototype. The main production type would be the Mark VI powered by the Rolls-Royce Eagle 8 engines and had much larger rudders than the original production models. By the time the armistice had been signed in November 1918, only a handful of Vickers Vimy's had been delivered and thus it was too late to see any action in the war. However, after the war, it went on to equip nine Royal Air Force squadrons operating from bases in England and Egypt and throughout the 1920s made up the core of the RAF's heavy bomber group. It wouldn't be until the early 30s that the RAF completely retired it from service. By that stage, the engines had been upgraded to the Bristol Jupiter and Sidley Jaguar engines and was being used for transport or parachute training. The Vimy also operated in a civil role and it was in this role that it's most famous for. In 1919 and 1920, the Vimy was the choice of aircraft for three record-breaking long-distance flights. The first occurred between the 14th and 15th of June 1919 when Captain John Alcock and Lieutenant Arthur Whitton Brown completed the first direct non-stop transatlantic flight. Taking off from Newfoundland, it would be a fraught 16 hours before the pair made a far from perfect landing in a bog in County Galway, Ireland and claimed the £10,000 prize. Later that year, Ross and Keith Smith, along with their two mechanics, Sergeant W. H. Shears, and Sergeant J.M. Bennett, completed the first flight from England to Australia. Flying a Vickers Vimy, the group of four took off from Hanslow. It took them 27 days and 20 hours before they reached Darwin and claimed the £10,000 prize on offer by the Australian government. Then, in 1920, Wing Commander Pierre Van Reinveld and Flight Lieutenant C.J. Quinnen Brand, along with their two mechanics, completed the first flight from England to South Africa. The crew took off from Brooklands in a Vickers Vimy and safely made it to Heliopolis. However, shortly after leaving Heliopolis, they crashed. No one was killed and the crew were lent another Vimy by the RAF to continue their journey. This only took them as far as Balawayo in southern Rhodesia before crashing on takeoff. Luckily, no one was killed again. Eventually, the crew finished the trip in a DH-9 borrowed from the Royal South African Air Force. All three flights were major achievements in long distance flight, and all pilots involved became aviation pioneers. They all highlighted the ability of being able to fly anywhere, around the world, 
and started to connect distant places such as Australia and South Africa that would usually take months to travel to. The Vimy did some military service in the 1920s when China purchased 100 Vimy's from the RAF. Only around 40 were ever delivered and used in the second Gilles Fontan War of 1924. They were also used by France and Spain. The Vickers Vimy would be developed into the Vimy Commercial, a transport version of the Vimy, while providing the template for designs such as the Vickers Vernon, Virginia, Victoria and Valentina. With more than a thousand originally ordered, it is believed only around 250 were ever completed. Nonetheless, it was a truly remarkable aircraft. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. A big shout out to all my subscribers, and if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to go hit that button down below. Also leave a like and a comment, and stay tuned for future videos.